Hamaguans, uh, me again, it's Zabuki. I have been asked a lot, a lot, a lot, all over the place about my PC that I bought from eBuyer. Is it safe? Is the graphics card good? What kind of things do it, is the, is the cooler good? Is anything like that? I am here to answer all of your questions. That is my plea for you today. I've had so many comments and so many things that need to be answered. So I'm going to try and give you a little rundown of some of the comments I've had and see if I can help some of you people. Maybe you can see the setup. I might use my phone and I'm like swing you around so you can have a little look. But until then, let's get on into the video, shall we? First question, I have a list because I don't remember the top of my head unless I want to go through my phone, which I can't bother. So, my list. I've had a few of them saying my LEDs. How about the LEDs or the RGBs? One of the questions was, uh, LEDs won't turn on. I had a comment saying that so, uh, one of the lads or one of the, one of the boys on YouTube or one of the YouTubers has decided why his, his, he bought one, but his lights won't turn on. So... I would say to them, well, first of all, I'll show you on the video too, but I've had no trouble yet with my, my lights. I have had trouble with, because you have like, you have like a mini hand control for it, which you get from all LED switches, and all LED strips nowadays, or any kind of changing bulbs, or anything like that. So it comes on here, it has like all the settings, the presets you can use at the bottom. Then you can preset to different colors, which is really nice. LED speeds. You can hold the fans, you can turn the fans off, which I quite like, and you can adjust the speed too. So if you if you find them in your game in and you find they're too loud, you can cut the speed down slightly. Not a lot, obviously. You, you do it too little, you're gonna you're gonna run into overheating issues. But the only thing the only thing I have had a trouble with, which wasn't a trouble, but it took me a while to figure out where the because uh, you know most most LED ones or any of the RGB lights, LED lights have a little sensor. You have that a block and then you have the sensor thing and the power sensor thing. I couldn't find it. I had no idea where it was. But it turns out it was hidden. If I show you on my phone. So you all know the glass panel, the glass panel, three little pins, or well, four little pins actually, sorry. Four little pins, boom, 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 gets chucked on the floor down here, and you have four little screws. Mind the desk, it's a bit cluttered at the minute, it's been collecting Pokemon cards today. But uh, a lot of questions I had about the LED lights or the RGB lights. Absolutely beautiful. Look at them though, from the back. But there's a little sensor just there. I don't know if you can see it. And I couldn't find out on the, the plug because I kept pointing up and pointing down. I could never find out where it was. Just turns out it just pointed at that and it goes off. See? Simple as that. That turns the LEDs on, turns the LEDs off. But I did have trouble with it. See? Now I seem to can't get it back on. But it would help if I press the on button. Look at it powering up. Look at it. I love this fan too. It's so nice. Oh, we're on flashing settings now, are we? Oh, a bit, a bit of fancy mode, did it? So you can turn your fans off, you can turn your fans on. You can go into your presets, which is really nice. Absolutely adore this graphics card. I've had a lot of things about the graphics cards, but I'll get into one of those stories in a minute. But change all your settings. You can go into white mode, you can get to blue. There's some really cool, if you just flick through it, there's some really awesome settings on here. Like, that's my favorite. And if you want to, you can just do loads of other things. There's loads of different modes. You've got modes and stuff that changes the lights. So if you look at it, it changes all the colors. So if my phone would like to focus. So I don't like that. But as to regarding his question, I've had no trouble with mine. Mine literally just plugged straight in. Well, it was already plugged straight in anyway, so nice and easy. Just mind you don't stick your fingers in here because it is, it is live. First question about LEDs, removing the plug, plug-ins. I've had no trouble with mine. Mine was already plugged in, but I'm guessing there's a, if you have had trouble with yours, I'm guessing there's like a little plug-in that might have just come apart slightly, just push it back in, just take your back panel off. Really simple, it's just two little screws on the side of it. Panel slides off, you can look at the back of it. So I changed my last one. Now, I have hair all over my mic, that's disgusting. <laughs> one of my second questions I got from one of my, well they're not even subscribed, but you need to subscribe to the channel guys, because I'm not happy about that. A lot of comments, but no subscriptions. Work that one out. Anyway, cooling issues. I had a lot of cooling issue ones saying that, um, well, I could read some of the comments, I just I have to go into my phone, I can't be asked. Even though my phone is right here, I just can't, hang on, let me look. I can't find the comment, but cooling issues, it's on there somewhere, I'll find it for you, and if I find it, I'll log it up there. If I can't find it, then you're not gonna have it. But, cooling issues, I have had people talking to me about it. I need to move my mic every time I talk, because I'm going over a distance, and I'll be like, hello. But, cooling issues, there is a few, Problems I've had, or well, not really problems, but I've noticed there's been a lot of comments. Not so much I've had, because believe it or not, some of the if I go into my no, not that one. Sorry, I don't want to go. I need to store some drivers too. If I go to this one, performance. See my performance. Where is it? My 
Now my graphics card is not doesn't really get more than 50 well it's dropping now it doesn't really get more than 50 degrees it literally gets to 49.50 even when I'm playing games really hardcore like when my FPS is really high and I still don't have any troubles with it but there's a lot of people that are talking about the cooling fans because at the minute this plate here I believed it would come off let me just zoom out slightly if I can do it wide I thought this cover would come off but turns out it's actually attached to it on the side so the only thing we've got is the vent here pulling cold air in you can remove this if you want to and put another one in so you haven't have to buy some mesh which is just really easy i got on my old pc and then you just remove the panel here and you can put more vents in same on this side but i have noticed that this baby here the cooler that i've got sucks in a lot of air to cool the cpu down but they've also got the top one here that that's massive like compared to the, some of the other pcs i've seen there's a big vent a lot of air, a lot of air in well, a lot of cooler and there's also one here that's quite big there's they're quite massive cooler to it and i know that he lots have a lot of air in and he pushes straight through there and it pushes straight out and there's if you put your hand here i know obviously you shouldn't there's a lot of cooler coming out of this so i know it is tempered glass i know that you could have a problem with it but i suppose if you've got a problem with it all you could do is just open the side panel i know they don't recommend it but you can just open the side panel and check a, check some cooler you probably put a cooler in it if you ever wanted to if you were ever worried but me i've had no trouble with my my graphics card, I've had no troubles with the PC over here. No, it's gone to 51, so that's about it. But I, if you look at it, it doesn't really go. I think the highest I've got is like the temperature gets to 83 and something like that. My old graphics card used to get to like 100 and something, but you're allowed to get to 80 or 90, and it, that's how the graphics cards work. Obviously, for long time performance, you're playing it for like 10 hours a day, maybe. But then you could just add other things. If you're playing it for longer than that, you can buy other equipment for it. You can buy a cooler or something like that. But, okay, no troubles with that. Next one was front panel removal. I've just told you about the front panel. It isn't removable. I'm guessing it might be removable maybe, but there might be some screws like at the bottom here you can take out. Because my last one I didn't think it was because I had a mesh plate, which was absolutely fantastic. But I'm guessing you could if you wanted to. I'm guessing the screws, I haven't looked into it, but most of them just like pop off, don't they? So I'm guessing. I don't really want to break it. Cost me a fucking fortune. Anyway. Dust filter, another one. I had a comment a couple of minutes ago from Tristan who asked me if the, it comes with a dust filter. It doesn't come with a dust filter for the inside. If anybody doesn't know what a dust filter is, it goes in the back of the RGB lights or where the fans are. It goes in the back of there. So when it's sucking the air in, it will cool everything down and it will stop the dust from going in, into your actual PC. I haven't got one on the other side. I've got one on the top here and one on the side, but there's no one on the back panel. But at night, I usually just get a cloth and I just chuck it over the top of it because we've got ladies over there. Or, late, or gerbils, two gerbils, and they're quite dusty sometimes. My desk sometimes gets a bit black and a bit dusty. But I just chuck a thing over the top of it, same as my keyboard, everything gets a cover over the top of it at night, just so I know everything's perfect and everything's safe. You don't have to do it, but that's just personal things for me. Like, I know it's safe then, so I know everything's fine. But I shall show you what I had. Now, when I did mine, I just had uh, just the panel here. So this this panel here has got two, well, four magnets, one on the bottom, one on the top, and two on the sides. I go nice and wide and literally pull out pop it in buy them on ebay for like and literally like three or four quid but this come on my old pc when i did my my pc case when i did my first pc changeover i pulled that out and put it in my first case put it in my second one and this didn't have one so i pulled it out and put it in third so no troubles with that i've had pretty nice my dust floor was fine not my pen too by the house look it's a friend's one it goes pivot 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 ugly naked guy we're on a break. We are on a break. How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. Anyway, prices. I paid roughly about 1,300 quid. I think it was 1,300 quid. But I only got this. I didn't get the whole setup with it because I had this for my old previous one and the previous one before that. This, just the desktop itself was uh, 130, well, yeah, 130 quid. I had free delivery on it. I'll talk about the delivery in a minute, but it's about 130, well, 120, 1,200. I wish it was 200 quid. Imagine it 200 quid for a top end. I think the graphics card itself is nearly like six to 700 quid, maybe 800. And for the, I also noticed that I've been saying G-Force. I thought it was G-Force, but of course it's G-Force. I thought it was Geoforce, as in like Pokemon cards or like Geoforce. You know, Geoforce, ah, anyway, rambling on a lot. Here we go. Price-wise, fine. Connecting the controller. There was a person on there a couple of weeks ago that said that they had trouble connecting the controller. I'm not really too sure how you're having trouble connecting it. You basically just get your your mostly any lead goes in the back of it. Any USB lead, mini USB, straight into the back of it or on the top. I have 
found that I don't like using the top ones because I always kind of pull it out. So when I'm playing games, if I pull it too quickly, I don't want this whole fucking thing flying up and smashing me on the face and turning anything off. So I plug it in the back, go into my settings. I, w I would show you, but there's no point because you roughly, anybody who's watching this video knows exactly what I'm talking about. Go into your settings, find the controller one. So if it's disabled, switch the controller on. Bob's trying to find to see if your next door neighbor. Controller's working. That's easy what I can say. That's all I had to do. That's all I literally did. I plugged it in and played. It come up as soon as I, I switched my USB anyway. It literally plugged in straight away and it was boom. It literally turned itself straight on. It recognised it and I was playing with my hand control. I know my other half's PC. She's having trouble connecting hers. But it's an older model. It was one of my older ones. So you, you can see how the issues are. Perfect. This is. I like to say with this PC, literally by the minute you press on, the minute you sign in, instantly everything's on. I love the fact that it's just instant turn on. It's one of my favourite things. Recommend it. Anybody gets it, gets it. Next controller, rating the performance. Out of 10 out of 10. Graphics card, I'm going to give easily a 9.5. It's not a 10. Trust me, it's definitely not a 10. When it comes to VR games, 10 out of 10, easy. But I'm running the Quest anyway, so it's not really... But I, I do have trouble with that. I've got... Um, one of the cables for it, I think it's down there somewhere, one of the cables for it, but I couldn't be bothered to spend like 80 or 90 quid on the Oculus cable, so I literally just bought a really type, a type C one into a USB, plugged it in here, got a really long cable, thought I would have had trouble connecting it, nothing, runs like a dream, plug it in, plug and play, that's the best thing about it, plug and play, nice and easy, you don't have to worry about anything. Perform uh, like I said with the fans, perfectly quiet, I can't even hear them in the videos. I do have problems with my mic, but that's just me because my aux cable sometimes gets twisted around and I think I've damaged the cable inside it slightly, so I need to look at buying a new a new mic, but I am thinking about buying a lapel one maybe, something that's a bit different. Who knows? But sometimes I do the audio from the camera. I have noticed I've had problems with this, but rambling on from the PC, you hear this, you hear this, not my mic, unless you want to see my mic. Go ahead, this is my mic. I'm not mic, this is my mic. Ha, lolin, lolin. Anyway, I like it, it comes really good. I've had no issues with it, and I've been running Fortnite at like, what have I running Fortnite on the other day? I did write it down. Fortnite was running at like 210 to 180 frames per second. I was loving that. The only thing is I don't have a 4K monitor, so my resolution's a bit shit. But I was running at a really good range. I was running at uh, 1080, which is normal ones, which is fine for me. I'm not a massive gamer gamer. If I'm gaming, I'm usually on the Xbox or the PS5. or well, like PS5 or the PS4, because I can't get a PS5 at the minute. Who's in my boat? Comments below. Xbox or PS4, PS5 even. And Minecraft I was playing that the other day with uh, just normal on its own, just playing normal Minecraft as you can see just on the normal setup is running at like something stupid like 210 frames a second but if you're on the RTX it runs down to about 180 to 190 but we are ray tracing it but it's absolutely beautiful. It's such a nice game. I'm thinking about doing a video on it but we shall see what happens, but we'll recommend it. But things like Fortnite or Warzone, Warzone's running at like 200 frames a second. It's, it's, it's pretty nice. Any games that you think it won't run, just let me know in the comments and I'll have a look for you. One here, five minutes. I'll quickly do the little recording, then boom, bam, bosh. Sweet. Uh, e buy. I've had a lot of questions. Let me just get you in the, in the, in the zone, you know? A lot of questions that say, is e buy safe? Now I have I when I first started I'd never ever 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 heard of eBay. It was always eBay or Amazon or like uh, PC specialists. PC specialists were like really cool but bloody expensive they are for what you get. But they are pretty notch and shit hot with a no. But I would recommend do your research first. If you're gonna go eBay, research. There's a lot of people that have messaged me or commented below or private messaged me asking about the PC and uh, they've had problems with the delivering. My one three days. I ordered it. I think I ordered it on the Friday, and by the Sunday or by the Monday, it was here. It literally, it come with Yodel. They delivered it. Boom. I had it within like three days. I was shocked. It actually come a lot earlier. It was meant to come. I was meant to order it Friday, and then Friday it was meant to arrive. But this arrived literally three days. So I highly recommend anybody who goes to eBay does it. It's safe. There's no problems with it. I know a lot of boys who I work with. They've had no problems with eBay. No problems at all. They get straight on it. Download something. The only good thing about it is, like I said, you sometimes you have credit, so you can instead of paying like 50, 60 quid, or like 150 or 200 thousand pounds, something like that, or 2,000 pounds, you can pay an installment, so it'd be like 13 pounds for like two years, which isn't bad, is it? I was lucky enough to pay this out because I had a nice tax rebate, so that paid for my PC, which was quite handy because my PC at the minute was absolutely rinsing my ass. It was costing me a fortune just from graphics cards alone. Well, that's a different video, don't worry about that. My recommended for eBay if you're looking into something. Do your research, you buy it. Find the PC you want, 
go from there. If you find the PC you want, go onto YouTube, find the video, like my unboxing video, you can see step by step what it looks like, because I always find that I like to see what it looks like, because if it's smart, I'll have it. If it's not, yeah, same as graphics cards and lights and Oculus Rifts and Oculus Quests and lights and anything like that, always look on eBay. You'll find something, you guarantee, on some, somebody streamed it or someone's done something. Uh, so my recommend is just do your research, try and find out what's good. I've had no troubles with it, but I know a lot of people have had uh, problems with deliveries, but I believe that could be just the, if it could be, either because I had trouble when I was first buying it, that the graphics card I wanted, or the graphics card I liked, wasn't in stock on a certain PC model, I could only get a certain model. So when you, they bought it, I reckon, I probably would think that what they've done is just clicked it, clicked what they wanted to and they thought they bought it, and then when they bought it, when it arrived, it hadn't turned out to be the, the recommended spec, because you're not allowed to sell something unless it has, you're not allowed to sell, I'm not allowed to sell you this piece of paper if I sold you a bloody hair bobber instead. You can't, it's just, it's, it's false advertising, you're not allowed to do that, a lot of people do it, but I don't think eBuyer would, they're quite, they're quite trusted, quite recommended people. Sponsor me if you want to hear eBuyer. I've got your video here, sponsor me, for God's sake, let me know. It, I would say it's safe, don't worry about anything guys, get on with it. Do your research though, like I said, and then you'll be fine. Uh, what other questions do I have? I'm just going to click on my quick from my phone now and we'll have a look what other questions I had. Uh, what other questions do I have? There's a bloke on here saying he had a faulty. Uh, but that's one question I get asked a lot. Uh, some of the PCs that they bought from there have been faulty. So uh, there was a lad on there that was talking to me and he had. Uh, I think he had a. I think his remote was dodgy. I think something happened with his remote. But I don't know if you can just pull the battery. You can literally pull the battery out and replace the battery if you want to. It's like a little, I can't even pull it out myself, but there's like a little switch here. Pull it out and you have a little battery in the back of it. You could try and replace that with just like, because I've got so many of these bad boys. Batteries are fine. You can literally buy a, a battery from Poundland or something like that for a couple of, well, it'd be a pound because it's Poundland. Huh. Uh, if it's if it's bust and you have problems with it, maybe the, maybe the sensor's not working, you just throw an e-buyer up or email them, but they're pretty good. Any problems with it, you buy, you'll get, within minutes or within days, you'll have an email back. And if they'll reassure you, you just basically send the PC back to them. Keep the box in, keep the packaging, then just check it in the packaging, send it back. They'll replace you with the money or they'll replace the thing. Hope this little tutorial has helped you a tiny bit. On my thing, buy it. Absolute beast of a machine. I shall see you on the next one, DVQ ones. I hope you're well, I keep you keeping safe, and I'll see you on the next one. Also, why have you not subscribed? Anybody who's watching this, subscribe. I've had 800 views. Subscribe to them. 800. I could have 800, 800 uh, subscribers, but I haven't. What are you waiting for? Bye, guys. Bye-bye.